Hey, what's up? I'm Ashley. Thank you for watching this video. And today we're going to be talking about Maxine Chapman from Prime Videos, A League of Their Own. And although the entire cast did an amazing job, we're going to be focusing on Max and her best friend Clance and that whole storyline because something about it touched me in my heart and soul and I feel like I need to speak on it because I don't feel like enough people are talking about it and by the way nothing about this is going to be in order we're just talking I'm giving y'all my thoughts and my feelings and y'all put y'all's down in the comments so I'm watching this and I'm like where are they at where the black people at because I knew we were supposed to be up in there and then I'm like there they go they finally pop up on the screen because at this time the other girls are trying out to be on this baseball team called Peaches so and I'm like okay we see Max and Clance walking across the baseball field and it looks like they snuck in like they walked in from the back and as they're walking across the field they're met by these white men and they're like hold up where y'all think y'all going and Max is like well I want to try out for the team. But the guy says, this league is for Americans only, no colors. And I said, what? And Max is still calm. I could not be born during these times. This was during the 1940s. But Max and Clarence are calm. Max is like, we are Americans. We're from Illinois. But they're not trying to hear that. So they had to leave because they're black. And I said, I'm tired of this already. So we see Max and Clarence on the train back home. And while they're on the train, Clarence is asking Max, what are you going to tell your mama? Because Max's mom, Tony, doesn't want her playing baseball. She thinks it's a waste of time. She wants Max to be just like her, working in her salon. She wants to pass down her salon to Max. But Max don't want it. She don't want that salon. She don't want to be like her mama. She want to be like herself. She's always telling her that baseball isn't a real dream and that she needs something real to fall back on in life. We constantly see her mom trying to force her to be something that she's not and slowly pushing her more and more away. Max's dad is more accepting of Max and he's the one who actually taught her how to play baseball. There was a moment where I actually wanted to snatch mama up out of the TV when she was talking to her husband about Max saying that what if she's an invert and invert is another word for gay and she was like what if she's just like my sister I'm not about to deal with my sister and her and her husband was like well what if she is then what what you gonna do and Max overheard all this so why mama gotta be so dumb unfortunately things like this is still happening till this day ignorance let people be who they are I'm tired of saying that let people be who they are. So by Max hearing this conversation that her mom had with her dad, this made her think of her Aunt Bertie and she found her address. So she went over to her house. And when she got over there, she saw that Bertie was a big old queer, just like she is. And Bertie clocked her real quick. She said, look how she's standing with her arms folded like that. She is definitely one of us when Birdie was standing there with their wife. So because she got clocked so quick, it freaked her out. And when Birdie and Birdie's wife left the room, Max ran up out of there real quick. Also, Max's Aunt Birdie wants to be called Uncle Birdie. So that's Max's mom's problem right there. She don't like Birdie's lifestyle. She got a problem with it. She got a problem with how people want to live their lives. That's her problem. Constantly pushing people out of her life because she's so judgmental. She hasn't spoken to Birdie in so many years. But anyway, after that day that Max ran out of Birdie's house, she did end up going back over there and everything got smoothed out. Birdie and Birdie's wife understood everything. So that wasn't even a problem. But what was a problem was this conversation that Max had with her mom. Well, more like an argument, Max said, you love me, but you don't like me. Her mama said, it's not my job to like you. It's my job to raise you. Then she mentioned her uncle Bertie and was like, oh wait, I'm not supposed to say their name. Then her mom got even more dramatic and said, keep this up and I'm gonna put you out. Max said, I bet you would like that, wouldn't you? I'll put myself out first. And her mama had the audacity to say, stay and talk. Talk about what? There's nothing else to say. So Max ended up going over to Clancy's house and that worked out great because Guy ended up having to go off to war. And we'll talk more about that later. But let's stop and take a moment on Max's and 
classes of friendship because we all need a friendship like this. No jealousy, just a strong, supportive, true friendship that keeps it real and tells it like it is. And Clance brought the funny to the TV. At times, she was comedic relief. Clance is an artist. She be drawing in her sketchbook. She's married to this man named Guy. But Guy was drafted into the war, so she's worried about that. Because even when he writes her a letter, most of the letter is blacked out. It could be 60 words on the page, but they only let her read six of them, make it make sense. They're even blacking out her name. She's like, this don't even make sense because I know my own name. The way they do us so dirty and they don't prepare the black men going into war like they do the white men. And before a guy left, he was telling Clance that He's afraid of losing his glasses while he's out there and losing her. I can't even imagine. And while all this is going on, Clance is pregnant during this whole thing. So she's got to go through this pregnancy without her husband who may or may not even come back. And she didn't even tell Max. I think she didn't tell her because she knows that Max will put everything on hold to be right there with her. So now we get to this part where we see Max trying to give her mom another chance. And she goes to the salon. She asked her mom to do her hair. And her mom was like, you never let me touch your hair. But she was happy to do it. She was like, what you want me to do to it? And Max said, do whatever you think would be nice. So... They get to talking and her mom says, I love you and I like you. I like your fire and your heart and I like your hair. And when she said, I like your hair, I knew that something was going to go down with that. Because right after that, she went over to her uncle Bertie's house and she had him cut her hair. She said, I have to figure out who I am without it. And this is one of the reasons why I love Max's character so much. We see her struggles. We see her heartache. We see her trying to find who she is and staying true to who she really is in a world of people telling her to be a certain way that she's not. We see her achieve her goals. And I think it's everything that you would want to see in a story that's being told from the lowest lows to the highest highs like that time when she took a job at this factory that's dangerous you could lose a limb and black people get less training just to be able to get this small chance to audition for this all men's baseball team just for the coach to be playing her and stringing her along this whole time he told her he wasn't serious when he told her that he'll give her a chance if she got a job at this factory because everybody on the team, if they want to be on the team, they have to take a job at this factory. She would show up at this team's practice that she wanted to audition for, taking notes for hours just to get played and them not take her seriously. Talking about, I was just trying to be nice to you. So she was begging the coach so much that he was finally like, okay, show up this day and audition. So he was giving her a chance, but... When she was auditioning, she blew it. And right before she got that chance, she was confident. She told the guys on the team that she's willing to bet two weeks worth of her wage that she can out pitch any man on that team. She sucked so bad that the coach picked up her check and said, I'm going to let you keep this. The guys at work started teasing her and making fun of her about it, talking about her. But the girl can throw a ball from California to Texas. She just had an off day. It was nerves or something. It was not her day. So she was devastated about that. And at one point after that, she was like, I'm just gonna stop playing baseball. Maybe it's not for me. She gave it a little break. She had some back and forth on that. She went to tell Clance how she messed up at the tryouts, but Clance wasn't trying to hear it because she was sad about her husband leaving for war. This turned out to be the last night that guy was going to be home before the war. She was like, really? You coming over here with your baseball drama when this could be my husband's last day at home? So there's this guy named Gary who's on that team that she auditioned for. And Gary has a big old crush on Max, but Max isn't checking for him because she likes girls. And even Clance is chipping 
her and Gary, she wants her and Gary to be together, but Max doesn't want it. They was on a double date one time for dinner. That went left. They got into an argument about baseball. And then one day she woke up and she was trying to be straight. So she got herself together. That's that night that she had her mom do her hair. And she went over to Gary's house and she said, Ooh, those cheeks look nice. I was like, Ugh, what? And she's like, let me in. She starts kissing him. And Gary's like, you want some Dr. Pepper? I take that out on special occasions. <laughs> I think she was trying to sex the gay away, get delivered or something. But that was a failure. And he lasted literally like three pumps. She got up right away. She got her stuff. And she was like, thanks. That was mm-hmm. And went right on out the door and left him laying there looking dumb like he is. And that leads me to Carson because you can't talk about Max without talking about Carson. So one night Max saw Carson in the back alley kissing on Greta. Carson and Greta had their whole separate love triangle thing going on over there. Carson married to a man. It was kind of a whole mess. Max sees them kissing in the alley. They run into each other another time. Carson ended up being the reason why Clance was able to get the crap that she wanted. She went into this deli shop and the worker there was ignoring her and Max and wouldn't give them any type of customer service. So they left the deli and Max saw how upset Clance was over there. So Max went back inside and was demanding to get served, but he was still ignoring her. But Carson and another girl from the team was in the same place and they exchanged words a little bit and that's when the worker was asking Carson what does she want and that's when Max was like well actually I was here first and that's how Clance was able to get her crap white man was trying to stop her from getting some crap we can't have nothing but occasionally Max and Carson would run into each other at one point Carson thought that Max would blackmail her because she saw her kissing another girl but Max said, I don't care about you doing that because, you know, low key, she was doing it too. We see Max and Carson build this friendship. They would play baseball from time to time. And at one point, it reminded Max that she would never be able to be on the peaches. And at this point, it kind of reminds you of what the league meant to white women during this time and what it meant for black women because this is too totally different situations here and max has to be reminded of this all the time when she's better than all of those white women on that other team but she just can't be on it because she's a black woman all of these unnecessary obstacles that she has to go through i did enjoy max's and carson's deeper conversations as well max asked carson one time she was like what is it like being with her and she was talking about Greta because she knows that Carson likes girls like she does and Max at the same time is trying to figure herself out so she's trying to ask all the questions she can Carson ends up telling her that her husband Charlie is nice like warm bread with butter but have you ever had pizza and she basically left that like that and Max opens up and tells her about this girl when she was 17 but the girl wanted her to be tougher. So they're like, we have to find a name for ourselves since we're in between. So I really did enjoy watching their relationship on screen. Now let's get into how her lows became hot. She meets this woman named Esther at this party. They start dancing, they hook up. And then later on, she finds out that Esther plays baseball for this team called Reds All-Stars. And when Esther and Clance first meet, they do not hit it off. Clance started talking about how Max is better than all y'all on the team. And Esther took that the wrong way. To the point where Esther started shading Max. She was like, I'm going back to my team. You want to play baseball, but you don't got a team. I do. But Max and Clance still stay to watch the game anyway. So Esther is up there pitching and she's about to strike this man out until one of her teammates go to her whisper and say pitch to hit. So it turns out that the factory gives them a cut of the ticket sales 
when they throw the game. So all of a sudden, Esther starts acting like her arm hurts so she can't pitch anymore. And then she starts pointing into the stands at Max. And Max is like, what's she looking at? She looking at me? Clance is like, yeah, she gotta be looking at you. So they call Max down to pitch. Esther told her the team rules it's pitch to hit. But like you said, you've never been on a team before. So all things go. All things go, you've never been on a team before, show them what you got. Esther got up there and struck all these men out, the same men on the team that she auditioned for, the screws that didn't want her. So screw them. They're lost and this opened up a door for Max. She gave the Red All-Stars their first win in years and because the Red All-Stars now wants her to pitch for them on tour she's gonna go on tour with them the team that didn't want her at first that she auditioned for wants her now on the team and she said nah i got a better offer she ended up in the newspaper for what she did at that game that day and things are looking good for her the only person that's still hating of course is her mama when she found out that she was leaving she told Max that she wants her to start looking more into her family history what they did to get here and how women can't make it in the world without a man, especially a colored woman. She was doing so much that Bert actually went over to the house to talk to her and told her to stop pushing her daughter away. She always does that. And that's when Tony was like, you left and I asked you not to leave, but you left anyway. She was saying that her dressing more masculine wasn't the issue it was that she actually left and this whole conversation got me thinking and i'm over here thinking like hold up now what are they talking about does bert have a child and is that child clance i feel like there's a lot more to this conversation and hopefully in season two we'll be finding it out just like i feel like there could be more to this because like i said earlier clance is pregnant and she didn't tell max because she knew that she would put her baseball dreams on hold for her and she was telling Max's mom that she doesn't think that she can do this by herself. She can't believe she's doing it by herself because Max is gone and her husband is off to war and Max's mom tells her that she would never let her do this by herself. Now this could just be because you know Max and Clance are best friends. Clance has been around for a long time but something is telling me there's more to it too. I could be looking into it a lot but I don't think so. But now since Max is leaving Clance had to find a new roommate and the girl is annoying. I don't know how she's gonna do it. But at the end of the day Max's dreams are finally coming true. She's gonna be sharing a room with her new boo thing on tour and she's finally on an actual team. Finally, she's going to be pitching. And it was great to see her story, her struggle, her triumph. It was really relatable. And just seeing it play out really touched me. And I feel like it just needed its own video. It reminds you that dreams can actually come true. You just got to keep on trying. And we all need that reminder at times. Let me know if you've checked out a league of their own and if so, how did you feel about it? And that's about it. And like always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already and want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one.